morning everyone! Welcome to my new series, this is Let's Play Civilization 5 as China, episode 1, obviously. That's how we usually start this series, from episode 1. Actually, you could start from episode 0, that would also make a lot of sense. So, I'm going to talk a bit of strategy before I do anything whatsoever. I'm playing with the same mods as with my, uh, my America campaign, other than a few minor user interface mods. All, of course, are going to be linked in uh, a description in every uh, video I up upload. So, if you want links, there's going to be links there. So, let's talk strategy. Uh, so, the two important things about strategy are... Well, two important things are, first, we're playing China, which means we have some special stuff. S second thing is, I want to talk about reform and rule, and the third thing is, I want to talk about promotion pack. So, China. Let's take a look at China. Uh, can I... No, I have to go here. Okay, let's go to China. Z what's her name? Zetian, okay. So, uh, as Chinese, we have a few, uh, well, four unique, uh, actually five unique abilities total. One unique ability and four unique components. So first we have this amazing uh, crossbowman. It has double shot, and this is the best thing ever, of course. It has, uh, it's weaker, it has a weaker attack, but ha since it shots twice, it's way, way better than a regular crossbowman. We also have a war drunk, and this is, uh, I'm not sure if it's any good, and the uh, and the biggest problem with this is that this is a land-based map. Okay. Oh, actually, yes. What is this map? This is a China map. Is this the end of the map? It might be. An, it's probably end of the map. At least it looks like it. Okay. So the the way China map looks like it's a very hilly map. It doesn't have many mountains. It has some kind of Himalayas. It has uh, a a bunch of coastline like going like this, and a bit of coastline here. So there's a coastline in lower. Uh, left corner and there's a coastline basically on the left side and on the bottom side other than a small bit and there's a Himalayas but other, it's mostly like a very hilly map. It doesn't have any special resource placement so we're playing with more luxuries mod. As you can see this coffee in range which is from more luxuries mod. Uh, so the map is going to be land based but less unusual than a Great Plains Plus I played in America campaign. It's a more standard. It's uh, kind of like not that dissimilar from Pangea, it's probably a bit more hills than in, on Pangea. Anyway, let's go back to China. So we have two unique units, uh, I've said that Wardrang, like, this map has some coastline, it's not as uh, landlocked as Great Plains Plus, but it doesn't have that many coastlines, so... And I don't think it's going to be relevant, it has uh, efficient design uh, ability, which says 15% uh, combat bonus when defending and plus one movement. And they are not lost when upgraded, so... It's... maybe we'll recruit one or two? Not a big deal. Okay, so we have Paper Maker, which is like a library replacement that uh, gives us gold instead of costing gold. So basically, since we're going to build every... Uh, we're going to build a library in every city, or Paper Maker in every city, that means that we're getting plus three gold instead of losing minus one gold, I think, yes. So, that's a small bonus. Do they cost the same? They cost exactly the same. Uh, it's not a huge deal. And we also have Rice Terrace. So Rice Terrace says it yields plus one foot and can build, only be built on hills. And you can think like, that sounds like total crap. And this is total crap only... It only sounds like total crap because what it actually does... Uh, and I only discovered it after like trying something. Is, is If you check here, we can only build it once we have construction. And once we cons have construction... Uh, rice Terraces give plus two food on a fresh water. So if we build it next to a fresh water source, after we get construction, we're going to get plus three foot. So we're going, we're going to get plus one foot. Wait, where, where are we? Okay, we are here. So we're going to get plus one foot from base and plus two foot from construction. So actually they give plus three foot. And then we're going to get plus four after we get civil service, which is not that far away. So they actually give plus four foot, but only on fresh water. And outside fresh water, so if we build it here, it's going to give us plus th four foot eventually. On the other hand, they only get plus two foot outside fresh water, like if they're far away from fresh water. So fertilizer doesn't help. So first they go get only plus one, which is not very good. And after fertilizer, they go get, get only plus two, which is still not very good. So we're going to be building uh, terrace farms uh, wherever we have a river. I don't know how many rivers we're going to run into. Uh, I've randomly uh, generated a few maps of this kind, and they seem to have a decent amount of rivers and hills. So it kind of uh, works very well with our ability, which is kind of strange because the maps is from uh, the base game and the ability is from mod. 
from a uh, three and four wing components mod. So it's kind of a coincidence that they like the map was not designed for it. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to be building them. Uh, unfortunately, it's just a few abilities away, so we're going to start mining and so on. But construction is quite far away; it's not like that close. It takes what uh, six different uh, researching six different things uh, to go to construction, even assuming we don't research anything else. And we're obviously going to be building mines everywhere uh, on all all the hills that are not uh, near uh, fresh water. We're just going to be building uh, mines, not uh, not uh, rice terraces unless something really changes. Okay, so this this much is about China. So the second thing is, let's take a look at uh, reform and rule mod. So in previous in my America game, I took liberty and honor. So the big problem with reform and rule is that none of the ideologies uh, you can't really see it here because can we? Nope. No, only when you're adopting the ideologies it even unlocks. I think this is a kind of silly interface that, that you cannot actually even preview. Like you can preview stuff that you don't, you cannot actually adopt here, but this one for some reason is locked. It's advanced view. Oh, that's fancy. I always had this advanced view. I didn't even know that it's not. Okay, so in default view it's... Okay, okay, I get it now. Anyway, uh, so... Uh, Ideological tenants no longer give any significant happiness, so we have to pick happiness from uh, from all the regular ones. So let's actually take a quick look at what they give, because this is reform and rule mode, and it changes things very drastically. So in in base game, tradition is ridiculously strong. It gives us um, very huge bonuses to happiness in our capital, especially. So it's like minus fifty percent unhappiness in capital, which means a huge deal. It sounds kind of like trivial because it just just applies to capital but if your capital has like uh like you know, 30 citizens it means plus 15 happiness from just this and then plus one happiness from every 10 citizens in the city it says here run down uh in vanilla i didn't know if it run, runs down or that's what i assumed it runs down but it's basically like this in vanilla is crazy good here they nerfed like pretty much every mod that changes things nerfed tradition to the point where tradition is good for empires f it's actually good for small empires as it was supposed to so in this case we get, uh, I mean it's it's pretty good for small empires. Like uh, we get bonuses to all the cities. Which okay, so this this just gives bonus to capital. This is bonus for city growth. This is uh, cheaper uh, cheaper new tiles and bonus to melee units in friendly lands, which is really really specific and very relevant. And uh, this is extra slots in capital. Uh, this is a uh, bonus for National Wonders, which really is a bonus for capital, so they are all bonuses to make our capital amazing. And I'm not sure this is actually what I want. I want to expand a bit, I don't... maybe I'm not going... I don't know if I'm going to expand crazy much or just a bit, but I want to expand. Uh, yes, uh, and also like, all the unlocks, for example, this size is unlocks Hanging Gardens, this unlocks Pyramids, this unlocks uh, terracotta army, this unlocks a stone engine. None of this matters because that early game on immortal difficulty, we're not competing for wonders. Uh, we this actually matters starting from classical era, like patronage and so on, uh, because those one when those wonders uh, come online, we might actually start competing for wonders. So the fact that patronage unlocks Forbidden Palace, or a uh, commerce unlocks Machu Picchu, or uh, uh, re rationalism unlocks porcelain tower. This kind of matters somewhat, but like, I'm not going to compete with uh, AIs for wonders uh, early game. Eventually, maybe. Anyway, so tradition is good for small empires, as it's supposed to do. So let's take a look at liberty. Liberty gives us uh, production for settlers, uh, culture in every city, and uh, some garrison strength for. Oh no, cities with garrisons units gain uh, more combat strength. Each city. Um, Increases cultural cost of policies less than normal, so it kind of like gives us our culture back, sort of. I didn't do the math, so I don't know how good it really is. Uh, faster workers, cheaper roads and railroads, and plus to happiness from each luxury resource. So, as I said multiple times in multiple series, I think that vanilla game is r ridiculously strict on happiness, and I'd prefer if this was easier, and my solution is to use more luxuries mod, which adds a few more luxury types, so one, one city-state luxury, and I think something like four extra luxuries. We're not getting all four, but we can trade for the other three. So let's say we get one and we trade for the other three. So um, this is really huge, especially if you're playing with more luxuries. So let's say you're going to get 10 luxuries. This is 20 happiness. Well, you still have to trade for them because you're not, or get them somehow. So it's not 20 happiness for free, but this is 
uh, potentially one of the best ones. I think in uh, base game it was in Commerce Tree, if I remember correctly, maybe I'm wrong. But this is really, really great. If you have a, a large empire, this is just amazing. And also it gets us science from Colosseums and Circuses, which are going to be built pretty much everywhere we can. And uh, every city starts with extra uh, citizen and plus uh, one food in every city. And then we get plus one production from non-luxury resource. Plus one production from non-luxury resource is not that great, uh, not as great as it was in America game, because we don't get that many non-luxury resources. This is we, this is sheep. With actually, this is some. So in our capital, we're going to get one, two, three, four. Assuming I understand it correctly. No deer, also deer. So one, two, three, four, five. So two sheep, one deer. No three sheep, one deer, and one wheat. Unless we discover something. Uh, actually, does it also work with strategic resources? Oops, sorry, wrong click. Uh, Non-luxury resources. It works with cows, so presumably it works with sheep, and maybe it works with any iron, or like, I think we're going to discover at least one iron on horses. I think it's gu guaranteed by most map scripts that you get at least one strategic resource in your capital. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong. Anyway, so it would be kind of silly not to take liberty. Now we get honor. So, okay, oh yes, as Chinese, we, I discussed four of our abilities, I forgot about the last one. Uh, so our last ability as Chinese is that we're going to get a great general combat bonus is increased by 15% and the spawn rate is increased by 50%. So we get uh, twice as, no, we get one third as many great generals. Is it even true? Because every next one is more expensive, so maybe this actually doesn't matter all that much. But the combat bonus is, is higher, so great generals are awesome. So uh, honor tree, uh, what it does. Uh, bonus versus barbarians, obviously. Uh, f gold for each unit killed. Four units are maintenance free, so gold, gold. Uh, two happiness from courthouses, that's a decent amount of happiness. 100% uh, produ uh, production bonus on building courthouses, which never matters because I always buy them. Like, you usually don't have the kind of uh, happiness budget to uh, annex a city and not buy a instantly buy a courthouse. But maybe it's gonna be useful. Gain culture when you ca capture a city, uh, equals to 10 times uh, culture per turn of the city. That's probably not huge, but that's something. And anyway, important things is that... Oh, what is this? Oh yes, happiness from barracks, stables and forges. And uh, yeah, production for heroic epic. That's, that's that's a decent amount of happiness. So if, you, if you're going to do any kind of fighting, that's, that's pretty good. But this is the interesting one. So great generals are end 50% faster and plus two movement. So this kind of really synergizes very well with being China. Because as Chinese we're getting stronger great generals and we're getting more great generals and this means we're getting more great generals as well and they are faster and this means that military units get 50% more experience from combat and units in the same tile as great general gets plus 25% combat strength and heal 10 HP per turn and as a finisher we get 25% uh, attack for 50 uh, turns plus one food and plus one production from iron and horses can purchase just lung strength and so on. So, I think going for Liberty and Honor makes more sense. Like, I don't think Tradition is that great, and we cannot really unlock three, three different trees. I think we should just focus on two of them, and Liberty is pretty much necessary. I don't see I can uh, work without this plus 20 happiness, because I can't, for example, go Order and get plus two. Like, in Order, you get a Ideology Talent 10 in Vanilla that gives you plus two happiness for every monument. That's just crazy good. So every city get because monuments is basically, like, it's such an early building, every city has a monument. This gives you uh, plus like I don't know, 25 happiness or plus 40 happiness, depending on like no matter how big your civilization is, it's just amazingly good. So if you go with like late game conquering spree, it's just amazing. It just fixes all your problems to go, like at once, even if you get dissidents. We're not going to get that. Uh, so let's actually discuss the rest of the trees because like I just discussed three of them and I'm thinking this is just going to be like a strategy discussion and I didn't even like cover all the subjects, so let's just uh, get a bit faster. So piety. So, in my America game, I completely ignored religion, and that was kind of sad because I, none of the religions that, that uh, spawned were any good. So, AI got all the, AI's got all the religions, and all of them kind of suck. None of them had Pagodas, and Pagodas is probably the best one. So, what does it do? Uh, culture from shrines, faith from capitals, unlock Stonehenge, and after we get all policies, we get uh, science from holy sites, which is not something that's relevant because usually uh, I use. I mean, I. Uh, two great prophets just to build, make and reform a religion, and then I need uh, to use my science to buy like pagodas or whatever. If I'm going for religion, I usually want religions building, and I want some uh, some faith for 
uh, missionaries. So basically, I'm spending all my fate. I cannot afford like more, more great prophets, really. Maybe one, maybe two, but that's not going to be much science. So this is irrelevant. So the problem here is that piety is split between promoting, uh, promoting. Okay, so this is uh, a really general boost tip. So plus two fate from temples and 100% production on building shrines and temples. Uh, 25% tourist modifier to civilization that share religion with you. This is what? One happiness from shrines and temples. This is actually very good. Plus four happiness from grand temples and writers guild. Uh, r great writers are earned 25% faster. Cities with majority uh, region get also the second bonus. Uh, golden age when a great prophet or writer is born. 25, uh, sorry, 50% range for land, land trade routes, which is probably most of the trade routes. I mean, there's some cost in here, but I don't think we're going to... It's mostly going to be land trade routes for us, so... Uh, one production in cities for each religion without this one follower, that might be decent. Four gold from land trade routes. Uh, minus 25% cost for religious buildings and units. Gain plus one citizen when missionary increase that is purchased. So it's kind of split between like going for writers and tourism. Going for gold. Getting some citizens, getting profits. Uh, getting some happiness, like it doesn't seem like a weak tree in vanilla is much weaker. I think this is this is stronger, but it's somewhat unfocused because like religion is not a, it's not a way to win the game. Religion is just a, just a minor help. So I still think like if we were playing with some sieve that has like a massive religion bonus of some kind and we knew that we're going to get religion, that's viable. I still don't think this is great. Okay, so let's take a look at patronage. It also like tries to do two different things at once. So we get influence in city-states, uh, and Forbidden Palace, and trade routes to city-states, and more growth from merchant missions, and city-states you... you uh, but also get stuff like, city-states you conquer get plus 25% gold in one merchant slot. Uh, it's like, what? Uh, city-states you... yeah, you conquer generate 25% uh, more great people points. Uh, this is uh, city state you conquer get 25% science and scientist slot, and this also says all city state allies provide a science equal to 25% of what they produce themselves. Uh, so resources from city states, 50% more happiness from uh, luxuries gifted from city states. City states you conquer get plus for happiness. It's like half of this is for actually allying city states, and half of it from conquering city states, and this is the same except with culture. So. Like these two things are completely separate. Like you cannot, you you're not going to use both. So half of half of this tree is going to be completely wasted. You're either going to be allying a lot of city states, which is like a normal strategy, or conquering a lot of city states, which is an unusual strategy. You cannot do both at the same time. If you fight city states, all other city states are going to hate you. So I don't know why they stuck it together in one tree. Like it doesn't make any sense. Like this this design makes no sense to me. Uh, I mean it stacks a lot. It's like. It has so many bonuses, so for example, this one gives you bonus to both conquering and allying them. So in a way, even if you use only half of this, uh, half of the bonuses, it's still kind of strong, but I'm not terribly fond of this design. Okay, let's continue quickly. So aesthetics. Uh, this just... Uh, culture flex as happiness, uh, less happiness required to start gold, some more golden ages, uh, science when empire is happy. The thing is that we have such happiness penalties, it's not even worth it. Production and building wonders, culture in all cities that have built a wonder, happiness from every world wonder, I mean, something. Uh, golden age points from each unit killed, like seriously, here? Oh well, uh, longer golden ages, happiness and food from from guilds, and great artists are earned 25% faster. I'm not interested in any way whatsoever. I don't think this is relevant. I, I, I said this is always horrible in every version of the game. Let's continue. Commerce, culture from trading posts. Uh, more production when building caravansaries, markets, banks, stocks, exchanges, unlocks Machu Picchu. Uh, gold, uh, yes, gain gold each turn depending on how much gold you have. You get 100 uh, gold bonus if your treasury is empty, and the bonus decreases to zero if treasury has 1000 gold. This is kind of crazy, so if you spend gold like crazy, it can give you 100 gold per turn. Like, 100 gold per turn? That's just insane. Okay, you have to spend all this gold, like, right away. You cannot accumulate it. But up to 100 gold per turn, that sounds pretty decent. It kind of promotes like throwing gold, gold away, even if you like throw it at city states, it's just, it's potentially really strong, you have to unlock all of them, so that might be relatively difficult. So let's let's continue. Great merchants 25% faster, 4 foot from custom house, that actually makes custom house kind of relevant. And uh, 1 golden 1 science from every merchant specialist, more gold from caravansaries, gold from stock exchanges, 
extra trade route, 15% gold bonus from city state connections, uh, happiness for every city owned connected to, to the capital, happiness from caravan sales and mints, uh, cheaper purchases in cities, uh, more tourism uh, if you have a trade route. Uh, that sounds decent, it's just gold, 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 if gold is the key to victory. The thing is, gold is key to victory mostly if you go patronage, so it's like a patronage commerce combo, but you can't actually take both, because they unlock so late that unless you're Poland, then you can take everything. Like, it's... they are sort of synergistic, because that's what you usually must use gold for, but then gold can be used for, like, military units or something else. Uh, so, it's a nice tree, I guess. Exploration, of course, we... On mostly land based map, it has some it has some amount of uh, water, but not crazy amount. So in this mod, it unlocks uh, Great Lighthouse, which is really nice because Great Light Lighthouse is, is probably the best wonder other than uh, Forbidden Palace on like a water heavy maps, which this is definitely not one of them. Uh, but it's nice that they moved it here, so you can actually realistically get one. Uh, so military units are fifty percent less hindered by injury, uh, more influence per turn. Uh, with city states you could demand tribute from, uh, can purchase admirals with fate, that's of course nonsense, production and culture from fishing boats, production from lighthouses, harbors, seaports, faster production of all of them, happiness from lighthouses, harbors and seaports, uh, more production for naval units, great admirals are uh, generated 50% uh, faster and have plus 3 movement, your military, oh this is a strange one, your military forces are 50% more effective at intimidating city-states. I never actually did it other in my Germany game when I got tons of free units from barbarians. Uh, two movement from embark units, uh, melee, melee naval units can heal outside friendly territory for up to 15 uh, HP per turn. This is really strong, so if you're into naval game, like this is a good tree. And the last one is internal trade routes provide 50% uh, more food or production. Other players influence with city-states decreases 25% faster. What? Does it mean that if anybody adopts um, exploration and goes for colonialism, uh, it will decrease everybody's influence like globally or just in the uh, city states that you ally or something like that? I should probably check like the game files to see which one is true because this, it sounds like it's going to a single AA adopting this is just going to change the game for everybody. And if like let's say two AAs adopted, does it like stack and make everybody lose uh, influence super quickly? I don't know. Anyway, uh, rationalism, it of course got nerfed because it was too powerful. So if you get all of them, you get one free tech. You get a great scientist, uh, you can purchase a great scientist with fate. Uh, plus one food and plus one science for every uh, five citizens in city. Uh, ten science and ten culture when a university grows. When a city with a university grows to a larger population than it has been before. If the city also has a public school, the bonus is plus 25% science and 25% culture. So if you buy, uh, like, so if you have a city with, let's say, 5 population and you may get a university there and it grows to 10 population, it gives you a total of 50, of 50 science and 50 culture. It's not actually that, that as big as it sounds, because most of the growing is going to be relatively early. I guess you could just throw some... Well, I guess if you conquer a city, this also applies. So if you conquer a city and it just wrecks its population and it's just going to quickly regain it because it has all the buildings, Anyway, uh, it's a decent, uh, so scientists are earned faster, more science for research agreement, uh, grow more growth in every city, which is really strange at this stage, but whatever. Science from every specialist, I guess they kind of synergize with the university bonus. So 15% uh, science from universities, 25% science from observatories and hospitals, minus 15% unhappiness from cities, citizens in non-occupied cities. So there's a growth bonus and happiness bonus and science from every specialist. So it's pretty science focused. so this is a really good one. So maybe, like, I don't know, maybe instead of going deep into honor, uh, we're going to start liberty and depending on how, how it's going to go, maybe we're going to unlock uh, Forbidden Palace and then go for nationalism, I don't know. I'm probably going to start liberty at least up to meritocracy, I don't really see any reason not to. Anyway, uh, I wanted to, see, to talk about one more subject, and this is really getting long already, but there's one more subject. So there's this um, extra promotion mod that gives extra promotions. So I it has uh, so it has some of the relatively standard promotions. So for example, if you have like a uh, archer, it gets an uh, archery bonus, which just gives it more strength. It does not uh, it doesn't distinguish between uh, different terrain types, which makes sense because it's also always kind of silly. Uh, so that's relatively sensible. The thing is that it also has those learning promotions. So the learning promotions is like if you take a level in this your unit is going to get XP 50% faster from kills, and there are three levels of that. So I thought this is kind of useless, because if you do the math, 
you get the 50% faster, but every next promotion is more expensive. So it really never pays for itself. It sounds like it would, but it never pays for itself because uh, by the time you get like five promotions, so let's say you have a unit with 100 XP, like earned like normally, you'd get, you'd get four promotions. Let's say you have a unit which uh, got 10 XP and then got 100, which got reduced, increased to 150. Actually, yes, yes. So let's say another unit has 150 because it took one learning, so it got 50% more XP. This means it has uh, five promotions, but one of them is learning, so it doesn't actually return any. Like you get you after 100 XP earned, you just got when you started, and if your unit starts at more than zero XP, which most of them do, because you want to recruit units in cities with barracks and so on. Um, it's kind of completely pointless, it's just because this doesn't get multiplied, so on its own, learning promotions are kind of useless. The thing is that they actually have one nice side effect, and because they unlocked more cool promotions. So I have actually this written down. Okay, so let's actually talk about optimal promotions. So let's say if you have an archer, the optimal promotion is archery 1, archery 2, then, then you can take logistics after that. So the third promotion is already logistics. Actually, we because we're playing Chinese, we get logistics for free on our uh, crossbowmen uh, unique replacement. So we might not, not take this. So after archery three, uh, you can take range, sniper, and agility, which gives you plus one range, plus one range again, and then uh, one movement, one vis visibility, and one attack. So after seven promotions of an archer, you get uh, bonuses of strength, plus two range, plus two movement. No, plus, plus two range, plus one movement, plus one visibility, and plus two attacks. So three attacks per turn, uh, range four archers, or range three Gatling gun afterwards. Is that correct? Yes. Which sounds pretty, pretty amazing. Seven uh, upgrades is not a crazy amount. Anyway, so on, on, on melee units, uh, the only promotions you get are actually total garbage. So what you actually want to do is you want to get le like learning one, which does nothing. Lear well, it increases XP gain, but that does nothing on its own. Learning two, learning three, and after three, three levels of learning, you get like really nice promotions, like for example, cover, <laughs> which sounds really sweet. And you also get first eight. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be in Civilopedia because it's a mod thing. Uh, yes, so army heals 25% HP to all armies from same, same and adjacent tiles. Uh, I don't know if it applies to itself as well, and yeah, you, you require level 3 learning. So this is promotion number 4, so it's going to heal your armies crazy fast. Uh, it's 25 like HP gain for all, for, this for all the units around it. So having one unit with this promotion, which is the promotion number 4 if you go for learning, 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 uh, first 8, and it has le level, I think it has first 8 too afterwards. And where is it? Healing promotions, yes, first aid expert, 50 XP, HP, like this is the promotion number 5. So 5 levels is not that much, and this is crazy. It's like healed instantly, for free, to all the armies around it. Like, that's just crazy good. It's I never played with this because I only checked that after my America campaign, how, it work, how this model works exactly. And this is actually crazy good. And on horses, okay, so let's actually, like, yeah, let's do it this way. So as I, I was saying, so on range units you get... You can go for accuracy, but no, that's actually base game. The thing is they have to keep the base game promotions because some unique units get them for free, but normally you get archery 1, archery 2, archery 3, and afterwards you get a uh, range, uh, and then you get, uh, yeah, you can also get logistics after advanced archery, which is archery 2, uh, and then you get uh, range, then you get sniper, where's sniper? Or is it called sharpshooter? Yeah, no, those sniper sniper one. Uh, I'm not sure it's not here. I thought it was here. Anyway, and then, then you get all the like, uh, and there's also like the normal one that gives you just more bonuses. But the thing is like having extra range is more important than having extra strength. But I would say. And for mel for um, the most interesting news that is the uh, for cavalry news, which actually I think that it's so much stronger here. So let's take a look at cavalry news. Uh, do we get them here? Range promotion, naval healing, scouting, air, shared. Uh, isn't shared promotions? I'm honestly not sure where it is. I I just checked the game XMLs. I didn't actually play this. Uh, I didn't check it in Civilopedia here. Yeah, there's tons of promotions. Uh, anyway, you can get plus 
right away you can get uh, you have two choices you can get learning one learning through three levels of offense of offense and agility which is kind of silly or you can go for plus three movement just right away movement 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 so if we go to no logistics is, is just attack I think it was called logistic for some reason let's show logistic logistic X can I Logistic expert, advanced logistic, no. It's just something facing that logistics for some reason. Anyway, if you have if you have cavalry, you can get much faster cavalry and it's just it sounds like not big, it's just plus one, plus two, plus three. It's really huge, it's just massive. Uh cavalry that moves faster is just insanely good. Even if it's not any stronger. It, like it becomes just so much better. And for uh, and there's also like similar promotions for like naval units and so on and for yeah like for example these Zentronium tanks tracks for for tanks plus one movement plus two movement plus three movement and uh, this is the kind of stuff that they get uh, I'm not sure why there's no unless I there's probably some you can probably see this on this list it's just like I'm blind because talking and uh, talking and trying to uh, look at things at the same time is kind of difficult so yeah, so basically this. So we're going to try to not have our units die. Uh, I'm going to try to get high level units because this is much more valuable than in vanilla game. Of all, not just for archers and actually for every unit. Uh, and especially since archers stop, are not useless when they upgrade to gatling guns, they still get pl up to plus two range. Uh, well, if they go deep into promotions, they're getting a level 20 or something and they get like a, even one one more range. I think the archer can get up to four range promotions, but it has to have like really in insane level. So that will probably not happen because we're playing on standard speed, so there's like not that many turns to actually fight. And I'm trying to not do as much warmongering as my previous campaign. Uh, I was way too aggressive in my previous campaign as America. Just like Free America, imagine that. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's the strategy. So I'm going to episode, end the episode now. In the, in the next episode, we're actually going to start playing as China. So thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.